Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. It's 54 days to go into your GCSE Maps exam, so keep up the hard work. And today we're going to be focusing on surface area. So we've looked at volume recently, now we're going to be looking at finding the surface area of solids. So in this video, we're going to go through some examples of finding the surface area of various solids. And then there'll be some questions for you to try as well. It's quite an important topic, so I highly recommend at the end of the video, after you've watched it, you try the practice questions. So in the description below, I've put a link to practice questions on different surface area questions. So in this video, we're going to look at surface area, so let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at surface area. So we're going to look at the surface area of cylinders, cones, spheres, and so on. So let's find the surface area of the cylinder. So here we've got a cylinder, and we want to find the surface area. So that means that we want to find the area of all the surfaces. So we need to find the area of the circle on the top, the area of the circle on the bottom. They would be the same. And this curved surface area, the one going around the outside. So in terms of the top of this cylinder, we've got a circle. The radius of the circle is 3.8 centimetres. That is the radius of this circle going from the centre to the edge. And if we wanted to find the area of that circle, we would do the area is equal to pi r squared. So it would be pi multiplied by 3.8 squared. And when we do that, we get the area of the circle. And that would be 361 over 25 pi or 45.36459792 and so on centimeters squared. So that would be the area of the circle on the top of the cylinder. And that would also be the area of the circle on the bottom of the cylinder. So the air surface area would need to add together two of those circles. And then we also need to find this curved surface area, the one going around the outside of the cylinder. Now if you've got a cylinder, for instance a Pringle can or toilet roll, and you were to stand it upright, if you were to cut it vertically and lay it down flat, it would be a rectangle. And the length of the rectangle would be the circumference of the circle and the width of the rectangle would be the height of the cylinder. So what we need to do is we need to find the circumference of the circle and multiply it by the height of the cylinder and that gives us this curved surface area. So let's do that. So in terms of the circumference of the circle, so we would do pi times diameter and the diameter of the circle would be 7.6 centimetres because if it's the radius is 3.8, the diameter would be 7.6. So pi multiplied by 7.6, that'll be the circumference of the circle. And then we need to multiply by how tall the cylinder is, so we'd multiply that by 23. So if we do pi, multiplied by the diameter of the circle, that gives us the circumference of the circle. And if we multiply that by 23, that'll give us the area of this curved surface. And if we do that, we get an answer of 874 over 5 pi, or 549.1503958, and so on, centimeters squared. So that's this curved surface area. So to find the total surface area of the cylinder, we're going to need to add together the area of the circle, another area of a circle, and this curved surface area. So let's do that. 45.364 and so on, the area of one of the circles, plus 45.364 and so on, another area of a circle, plus the curved surface area, which is 549.1503 and so on. And when we do that, we get the total surface area of the shape, which would be... 5092 over 25 pi or 639.87959 and so on centimeters squared and if we run that to two decimal places that would be 639.88 centimeters squared and that's the surface area of the cylinder so if you want to find the surface area of a cylinder you do the area of the circle another area of a circle and the curved surface area and the curved surface area you find that by doing the circumference of the circle and times it by the height or the length of the cylinder depending on how you're looking at it and that'll give you the area of the rectangle Angle, which would be that curved surface which you fold around to be that curved surface of the cylinder and that's it so you do pi r squared for the area of the circle pi r squared for another area of a circle and then you do pi times diameter multiplied by the height of the cylinder and that'll give you the curved surface and then just add them all together and that's it so that's that question done okay so that's the surface area of a cylinder now let's have a look at the surface area of a sphere so here we've got a sphere and the surface area of a sphere is found by 4 pi r squared so if you use the formula 4 pi r squared that'll give you the surface area of a sphere and that's given to you so you don't need to to learn it off by heart, but I just remember the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Okay, so now that we know the surface area of a sphere is found by 4 pi r squared, find the surface area of this sphere, which has got a radius of 8 centimeters. Okay, so if we wanted to find the surface area of this sphere, what we do is we do 4 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius, which is 8 squared. And then if we do that, we get 256 pi, so that's equal to 256 pi centimeters squared, or as a decimal number, 804. 0.2477 and so on centimeters squared. So that means the surface area of this sphere is 804.2477 and so on centimeters squared. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next shape. So the next shape we're going to look at is a cone. And if we wanted to find the surface area of a cone, we need to remember there's two parts. We've got the curved surface and we've got that circle on the bottom. So in terms of the curved surface, the surface area of a cone is found by pi RL. Now, R is the radius of the base of the cone, so that would be 8 in this case. 
L is what we call the slant height, so that's that diagonal length there, that's 17 centimeters. It's not the height of the cone, that L is called the slant height, so we would use 17. So if we wanted to find the area of the curved surface of this cone, we would do pi, multiplied by 8, multiplied by the slant height, which is 17, and that would give us the curved surface. But we need to remember the area of the base, because if we want to find the total surface area of the cone, we need that circle on the bottom, so it'll be plus pi r squared. So to find the surface area of a cone, we need to do pi r l, so pi times the radius times the slant height, plus pi r squared, the area of the base. So here's a cone, find the surface area of this cone now. Okay, so what we'd do is we would take our pi, and we'd multiply by the radius of the base, which is our 8, and then we multiply by the slant height, which is 17, so multiply by 17. That would give us the curved surface area. Then we also need to remember the area of the base, which is this circle, so we do pi r squared, so pi multiplied by the radius, which is 8 squared, and that's it. So now let's just work this out. And when we do that, we get 200 pi, so that's equal to 200 pi centimeters squared, or as a decimal, that would be 628.3185 and so on centimeters squared. So the total surface area of this cone is 628.3185 and so on centimeters squared, and that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, now sometimes whenever we're dealing with surface area, what we'll find is rather than just being a cone or a cylinder or a sphere and so on, what you might find is that perhaps the sphere's cut in half and you've got a hemisphere, or it might be that you've got some shapes put together, so composite shapes, such as this one here. So I want you to pause the video now and I want you to find the surface area of this composite shape. So we've got a cylinder with a cone on top of it, so find the surface area of this shape here. Okay, so if I wanted to find the total surface area of this shape, I would need to find the area of the circle on the bottom. So we're going to do pi r squared to find the area of the circle on the bottom. We need to find the area of this curved surface of the cylinder. So we're going to find the circumference of the circle and multiply it by the height of the cylinder. And that gives us the area of this curved surface of the cylinder. And then we've got the cone on top, and we need to find the area just at the top part, that curved face on the top of the cone. So not the area of the circle, because that's being put together with the other circle of the cylinder. So that's inside the shape. So there's three parts. We've got the area of the circle, the curved surface of the cylinder, the curved surface of the cone. So let's find the areas of those. So let's start off with the area of the circle. So we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius, which is 2.5 squared. So pi multiplied by 2.5 squared. And that'll give us the area of the circle on the bottom. So pi multiplied by 2.5 squared is equal to 25 over 4 pi or 19.63495 and so on centimeters squared. So that's the area of the base of the shape. Now the curved surface of the cylinder, so that would be where we'd have the circumference of the circle and we'd have the height of the cylinder. So we need to do pi times diameter, so pi times 5 to get the circumference of the circle. And then we need to multiply by the height of the cylinder, which is 7. So that would be pi multiplied by the diameter of the circle, which is 5. So that would be the circumference of the circle. And then we need to multiply by 7. And then that would give us the curved surface of that cylinder, because remember it's a rectangle. So we're going to do that, 35 pi, or 109.9557422 nine and so on centimeters squared. So that's the area of that curved surface of the cylinder. And finally, we need to find the area of the curved surface of the cone. So in terms of that, that's pi r l. And this is perhaps going to be the most tricky part of this question because the radius of the base of the cone is equal to 2.5. That's quite straightforward. But we want to find l, which is the slant height, this length here. So from here to here. Now, in terms of finding this, we're going to have to use Pythagoras' theorem. Because we know that the height of the cylinder is 7 centimetres. We know the height of the whole thing is equal to 13 centimetres. So that means the height of the cone, this height here, is equal to 6 centimetres. We've got the radius is 2.5 centimetres. That's a right angle triangle. So we're going to have to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the slant height, this L, because it has to be pi times the radius times the slant height. So let's use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of this slant height. So let's do that. So let's call it L. And so we've got that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So it's going to be 2.5 squared plus 6 squared is equal to L squared. 2.5 squared plus 6 squared is equal to 42.25, and that's equal to L squared. And now we just need to square root that to find the length of L. So if we square root that, we get that's equal to 6.5. So L is equal to 6.5 centimeters. So L is 6.5 centimeters. So it's very important whenever you find that curved surface area of the cone to do pi multiplied by the radius of the base multiplied by the slant height. You don't use the perpendicular height. That'll probably be used for the volume of the cone, not the surface area of the cone. So it has to be, we're going to do pi multiplied by 2.5, multiplied by 6.5. And when we do that, we get 65 over 4 pi, or 51.0508806262, and so on, centimeters squared. So we find the area of the circle on the bottom, we find the curved surface area of the cylinder and the curved surface area of the cone. Now we just need to add them up. When we add them up, that'll give us the total surface area of this composite shape.
And when we do that, we get an answer of 180.6415776 and so on centimeters squared. And if we run that to two decimal places, that'll be 180.64 centimeters squared. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at one last question. So our last question says, the surface area of the sphere is equal to the sum of the surface areas of the cone and the cube. So feel free to press pause now and find Y, the radius of the sphere. Okay, so we know that the surface area of this shape, the sphere, is equal to the sum of the surface areas of these two shapes. So let's find the surface areas of these two shapes to begin with. That means we will know the surface area of the sphere, and that means we can find the radius of the sphere. So let's start off with the cube. So the cube's the easiest one. The area each side has got a side like for 5 centimeters. So we're going to do 5 times 5 is 25. So the area of the front of the cube will be 25 centimeters squared. And then we just multiply that by 6 because it's got 6 faces. So for the cube, each face has got an area of 25 centimeters squared. And then we just multiply that by 6 because there's 6 faces. And when we do 25 multiplied by 6, that's equal to 150 centimeters squared. So that's the surface area of the cube. And then in terms of the cone, we need to find the area of the base of the cone, which is pi r squared. And then we're going to need to find the curved surface area of the cone. So we're going to do pi r l, pi times the radius times the slant height. So let's do that. So in terms of this cone, we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius of the base, which is 8, multiplied by the slant height, which is 12. And that's equal to 96 pi, or 301.5928, and so on, centimeters squared. So that's the curved surface area of the cone. Now the base, the flat part, is going to be pi multiplied by the radius of the base, which is 8 squared, pi r squared. And when we do that, we get that's equal to 64 pi, or 201.0619, and so on, centimeters squared. So we'll add these together and that would be equal to 160 pi or 502.6548 and so on centimeters squared. So that's the surface area of the cone. We've got the surface area of the cube. If we add them together, that'll be the total surface area, the sum of the surface areas, and that'll be the surface area of the sphere. So let's do that. So let's take our 502.654 and so on and add our 150. So we'll add 150 there and that's equal to 600 and 52.6548 and so on centimeters squared. So that's fantastic because we know the surface area of the sphere is found by 4 pi r squared. That's the surface area of the sphere. But also remember the radius sphere is equal to y. So rather than writing 4 pi r squared, I'm going to write 4 pi y squared because I'm replacing the radius with y. So it'd be 4 pi y squared is equal to the 652, 652.6548 and so on. Now we want to find out what y is, so let's get rid of the 4 pi to begin with. So let's divide both sides by 4 pi. So we divide the left hand side by 4 pi and divide the right hand side by 4 pi. So on the left hand side, we'll be left with y squared. And on the right hand side, we'll be left with 51.9366273. So that's equal to the radius squared or y squared. Now we just need the square root, and if we square root, we'll find y. So that means that if we get so that means that y is equal to the square root of 51.9366273 and that's equal to 7.2067 and so on centimeters and that's it so we found the radius of the sphere and that's it so in this video we've looked at how to find the surface area of different solids i've given you some questions to try yourself so hopefully they'll be useful and also remember in the description below is a link to the practice questions keep up the hard work you're doing really 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 well if you find these videos useful please like them and please subscribe to the youtube channel and if you get any friends who might find them useful please feel free to share them with them as well um, you, there's 54 days going to your GCSE math exam. Keep up the hard work. All these different questions and things you've been doing, they're all going to go together and sort of, you know, build your confidence and hopefully mean that you're going to do really, really well in your GCSE maths exam. So keep up the hard work. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next video at 3 o'clock. Cheers. Bye.